Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And today I've got a full tank review for you of the Nurgle. This is also called the Crusher. It's a tier 8 British premium heavy tank that you will be able to get with about 10 to 20 hours, depending on how good you are, play inside the PvE game mode over the next couple of weeks. This Nurgle is certainly a very interesting tank design, with the tracks just extending multiple uh, kind of drive wheels over the uh, the front of the hull. This is perfect for using this as space protection for hiding your lower plate, or alternatively just sticking it around the corner and hoping that your opponents are a little bit thick and haven't fought this tank yet, baiting a few shells, and then surprising them with 350 alpha and pretty good darn damage per minute. Strong upper hull, bad lower plate, but also 10 degrees of gun depression, which makes this thing very flexible. And also, these, these wheels that come over the front, they can really do some funky stuff, as I'm going to be showing you later on when we test how this thing can be a bit of a crash test dummy. But before we get stuck into all of that, it's important to see how this thing holds up statistically. So firstly, I must mention that during a video that I released last week where I talked about the Nurgle as it was coming out, I used the Crusher statistics from the 1.26 update. However, in the uh, the patch, the test server 1.26.1, Wargaming significantly nerfed the Crusher into the form of the Nurgle. They shaved off pretty much 20% of its DPM, 15 millimeters of its standard pen, and they even changed it its turret traverse to a pretty horrible level and its tank traverse as well so if you and also its view range down from 390 to 360 so a massive nerf to that vehicle so please take that into account if you watched that video last week so i want to compare the nurgle to the other british tier 8 premium heavy tank or at least one of them the carnarvon action 10 and also the renegade immediately we notice that the nurgle doesn't have the dpm of the other two tanks but not to that much less than a vehicle like the renegade however its penetration is 11 millimeters less on its standard rounds on those vehicles its gold pen is 252 and its he is actually 57 which is pretty nice so that does trump the he rounds on the carnarvon action 10 but has less gold pen as we can see and on the renegade fairly comparable but better he penetration the renegade has 53 this has 57 so that can be useful for uh, clubbing through some surfaces or some thinly armored tanks i should say and also 500 alpha damage on the he shells compared to the renegade which has 440 if you can manage to penetrate he with the nurgle the damage per minute does become something very 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 nice indeed so rejoice all of you intuition users out there when you're shooting at lightly armored tanks so the alpha on this tank is 350 that's 10 less than the renegade but significantly higher than the carnarvon action 10 the gun caliber on this tank is 114 which is interesting that it is uh less alpha damage than the renegade albeit only by 10 that 114 millimeter caliber gun will actually help you overmatch 35 millimeter plates but you won't be going through 40 millimeter plates so for example the renegade will actually ricochet off the side of an stb1 whereas the Nurgle can actually overmatch it, so a slight advantage with the calibre of the gun there. The Nurgle also carries 50 rounds of ammunition. This means that you've got enough ammo to take a variety of HE shells, and it'll be very hard for you to run out of either your regular rounds, your gold rounds. That's why you should take a few HE rounds so you can make use of them. Gun handling-wise, it's good news and bad news for this tank. 2.3 seconds aim time, not bad. 0.38 accuracy, a lot like the Renegade there. And its gun handling is kind of identical to the Renegade, minus 0.01 movement dispersion so if you've played the renegade you should know how the nurgle is going to feel at least with regards to its gun handling however the mobility on this tank is awful 24 forwards is just so limited it's practically half of the renegade and it really just doesn't get around the map you definitely want to be taking a turbo and you want to be taking engineer on your driver to give yourself that one extra kilometer an hour if you put that inside the mobility slot you're actually going to be going at 30 with a regular turbo but oh my lord this this is a slow heavy tank i feel slow in the canava action 10 at 36 and this is 24 combine that with a very poor power to weight ratio and you just don't really get anywhere quickly and you think for a tank that's as big as the nurgle is it would weigh more than 72 tons that's only seven tons more than in a canavan action 10 so if you thought this thing was going to be an amazing rammer it's not bad it's not bad at all but it's not as if it's going to really be able to throw its weight around like a kv5 and anyway it can't really go fast enough to be able to do that anyway combine that with horrible turret traverse dispersion that means that it's hard for you to be able to quickly re-engage your opponents and also poor tank traverse as well then you're just not really nimble and you're not getting anywhere quickly you're not re-engaging any targets 
However, look at this thing's armor. 230 on the front of the hull, 80 on the side makes the side of the Carnarvon and even the Renegade look poor. And that 230 at the front is phenomenal. Also, the turret, it's 230 with 130 on the side. So the turret looks like it's worse than the other two tanks. But when we take a look at the 3D model of the Nurgle, you'll actually see its protection is amazing against 215, and it's still pretty good against 252. You need about 240 to 250 millimeters of going through the upper hull on this vehicle when it's not using any of its gun depression, but when it does get to use its gun depression, this does get better, and now they're going to need about 260 to 270 to be able to get through that upper hull. The lower plate, however, is really poor. It's pretty tragic, but it is well angled, which means that when you angle it like this, some of it does become an auto ricochet. Now, the, the turret, the mantlet itself, is pretty good. It won't handle tier 10 and tier 9 gold rounds, but it should still hold up against all of the 8s, the 6s, and the 7s when you get matchups like that. The weak points on top of this tank, they're really frustrating when your opponents are above you. It's really easy to go through these weak points when they're above you, but this is a tall tank, and so quite often they're below you and hopefully using your gun depression. If they are, then it's actually quite hard to hit these weak points, but remember this is a very slow tank, so they kind of stay static and stationary. Now, the real highlight of this vehicle is the fact that the tracks actually extend over the front. Now, this is kind of annoying, uh, as in they can track you, uh, around a corner, but they won't be damaging you at the same time. Now, the real advantage of these tracks is they actually count as a tremendous amount of space protection. We're talking about like 60 millimeters of spaced armor here or more. Accordingly, what you want to do with this tank is actually kind of overangle the hull, probably to about here or here, depending on whether you want to make the side or the lower plate a weak point. But if you go like this, as you come around a corner, for example, and let's get a trusty QB calculator out so I can be able to highlight what I'm trying to say here. Imagine the Nurgle coming around a corner like this. Now your opponents, even if they fire gold and they have 250 pen, they've only got like a 50% chance of hitting this plate. Now your tracks are actually protecting your lower plate, making it 300 millimeters of effective armor and even more against heat and HE. And the outside of the lower plate is kind of like 250 and some of it's an auto ricochet there. Accordingly, this means that the Nurgle can just come around the corner, not give a monkeys and just shoot its opponents. However, the, the amazing thing about this tank is if you angle it like this, and if I show you it visually, it's it's it makes more sense. Like, if you're thinking about shooting a tank like this, 90% of players want to shoot it here, but that's where its strongest armor is. Some people will think, okay, I'll just shoot it in the front plate. Well, it's actually got like 240 there. Funnily enough, the real weak point is actually here on the side, as we can see this whole area. But that just, it doesn't, doesn't make sense to shoot that. And when you also think about the side armor on this tank being having this really weird angling as it comes out, you can kind of bait people into shooting the side, which is actually tremendously thick or well angled. It won't do so well against heat along the upper hull, but it's very decent indeed. And so quite often it's kind of like a trap. And sure, eventually players will learn it, but at least for now, and even against players who, who it doesn't seem obvious to be able to shoot that part on the side. And you can really bait your opponents and players with poor knowledge will kind of just bounce off this thing. And even still, if you're moving backwards and forwards, hitting this thing on the side, it is a big target, but it's, it's just not the most obvious from the visual model. And so players will probably miss, players will hit the front, players will hit the side. Its armor is tremendous, and it's undoubtedly better than the other two vehicles in this comparison. And unlike the Renegade, it doesn't have a big weak point on top for players to shoot. I'd say the Carnarvon is still the better tank in a hull down position, but everybody knows how bad the Carnarvon hull is. The only downside really to the Nurgle is that while its armor is fantastic, it only has 1,400 hit points, so your durability isn't going to go a long way when your opponents start to hit you. Now, add to that abysmal camo rating and only 360 meters view range. This means that outside of a close quarters combat situation, you really struggle even with a good crew, recon, situational awareness, premium consumable, to be able to spot anyway at decent distances, even with the field mod. All in all, this thing is an absolute enigma. It has some amazing attributes and it has some horrendous attributes. It's really hard to, to kind of come up with a, a conclusion, at least at the start of this video, by just looking at the statistics. Crew-wise, the Nurgle has a four person crew that will work the same as your Super Conqueror. So what crew skills do I recommend for the Nurgle? Well, on your commander, I recommend Brothers, Repairs, Recon, Emergency Coordination, and Practicality. On your gunner, I recommend Brothers, Repairs, Deadeye, designated target, armor, and snapshot. 
However, if you think you want to sit stationary in this tank, then you might want to take concentration or alternatively quick aiming, considering how poor the turret reverse dispersion is. For the driver, I'm going to take Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Engineer as three mandatory crew skills. And for the others, it's going to be a, a case of personal preference. I'm probably going to take controlled impact on this vehicle because 30 kilometers an hour is still enough to create those micro bumps against your opponents and be able to pressure them. Off-road driving, and I'd probably end up taking clutch braking on this vehicle because its traverse speed is so horrible. However, for reasons that I'm going to show later on the video, reliable placement can actually be quite Mimi on this tank. And let me clarify, this is a skill that I haven't taken on any of my other drivers so far in the, uh, the hundreds and hundreds of vehicles that I've skilled up. For your loader, I'd recommend Brothers in Arms, Repairs, Intuition to make use of those HE shells, Ammo Tuning, Safe Stowage, and Adrenaline Rush. And for the radio operator side of your loader, Situational Awareness, Firefighting, and Side-by-Side. -side. Equipment wise, I feel like the Nurgle is really simple. I'm going to take Durability, Turbo, and Gun Rammer. Now, with regards to whether you should use an experimental turbo on this tank, I really feel like it needs the extra grunt that you get from the engine power. So I'd put as good of a turbo as you can on this tank. Bounty or Bond would be excellent because without it, this thing feels really slow. For a second build on this tank, I'm actually going to drop the gun rammer and use coated optics. That's for when I'm playing on maps like Prokhorovka or Malinovka and I actually need a little bit of view range. However, others of you out there might want to do something, something funky like drop the turbo and take vents instead with a gun rammer to be able to up the firepower in close quarters combat. But this tank is so slow, the turbo is mandatory. The tracks get so many hits the durability is mandatory so i'd say the only choice that you have is in the third slot as to what you want to do and because this vehicle has pretty good dpm for a tier 8 heavy tank i don't feel like i could drop the gun rammer and use vents field mods wise for the first one i personally think it needs the all-terrain suspension to be able to get the improved ground resistances otherwise this thing just feels so slow it, you just feel like a bit of a spectator however i'd like to mention that when you do this you do actually impact uh how healthy your suspension is and that will mean that you will sometimes get hit uh, your tracks will get taken off in a single shot when they hit that gigantic front drive sprocket for the second field mod take your accuracy for the third one improve the view range and for the bonus slot i'm personally going to be taking the mobility to buff up the turbo but for those of you who want to uh, focus on firepower and up the, the gun rammer that's an option anyway i think that's quite enough chatting Let's see what these front tracks in the Nurgle are actually capable of. So, I went on the NA server uh, with the Nurgle, and a shout out to everyone who joined uh, this training room, because I wanted to test out one thing, and that is, how good are these front tracks on the Nurgle for absorbing damage from collisions? Because I thought, the way that explosions work in World of Tanks, or the way that ramming works, is that I should be able to actually take a drop, right? So, we lose a good amount of hit points. I lost 694 hit points there, but that is quite a substantial drop. Look what happens when other players, for example, they try to uh, do the same thing. Dead, uh, come on, let's have some more victims here. Dead, any, any, anyone else? Thank you to the T95, dead. Oh, that 2790 must have landed on his tracks. IS-4, dead. Lots of vehicles die. So these tracks, they kind of allow you to just drop down face first and be able to take less damage from falling. But then I had a thought to myself, in World of Tanks, with regards to ramming damage, what happens is, is that an explosion is created at the point that the collision happens. And this explosion is as if it was a, a high explosive artillery shell, for example. Now, because the Nurgle's tracks are so far away from the actual hull, when collisions happen, the explosion might not actually reach the Nurgle. So, ladies and gents, what happens if a Nurgle uh, rams a mouse with its tracks, for example? I'm not taking any damage. This thing weighs 180 tons. I actually just did 64 damage to the mouse and I didn't take any damage from the mouse. I still have my 78 hit points. How bonkers is this? So I took a little bit there. I actually took 21 damage, 
but I did 108 ramming damage to the mouse. So what this shows is that you can actually use the tracks of the Nurgle to kind of parry people who are trying to ram you. I, I, I did 89 damage to the mouse there. So if you turn the tracks, you will actually make it so that you don't take ramming damage, but you still deal ramming damage to your opponents. So do you notice how I turn the tank to the side to kind of parry these filthy casuals with my tracks? That is absolutely nutty. And while you will take a little bit of damage, 11 from a 180 ton tank, and we do uh, test the uh, the limit here uh, with the mouse at the end of this battle. Uh, yeah, that that's, that's gonna hurt anyone having down a, a slope like that as the explosion effectively gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This is a pretty nutty game mechanic. So ladies and gents, what happens if an E50M rams you at full speed? This is real time now. Okay. Uh, we take 123 and we deal 909 ramming damage to an E50M. Now, let me clarify that the E50M weighs, what, 60 tons and this vehicle weighs 75. Look at these bumps. We just, we just don't really take damage. So we can have 15 volunteer Americans from the front. Parry, parry, no damage from the E100. Uh, no damage from the E100 there as well. Haven't taken any damage since the E50M. I even managed to get rid of the EBR on full health. So you can just parry everything. Hold on, that was that was an interesting one. The E50M tried to ram me actually from behind. Didn't like it very much, so I decided to finish him off. Um, it's crazy. So look, I'm not... That's how you do 7,000 ramming damage in World of Tanks, by the way. Now, I'm not suggesting that this is going to be like a huge perk of the uh, Nurgal, but it's definitely something that you will be able to use to protect yourself in close quarters situations. Um, however, I I'd like to say, uh, if you thought that uh, uh, this cliff was going to be possible for a, uh, a Nergal to be able to uh, jump off, and uh, no. Uh, <laughs> didn't realize this was a jingles video. Um, no, uh, unfortunately, uh, that was a little bit too high of a cliff for the Nergal and it's, awesome tracks at the front. So firstly, we're going to be rolling out on Stajanki and we're going to be playing against some tier 9 and some tier 7 tanks. A nice balanced match making here. Let me clarify, I am playing on the North American server if you're noting, noticing any of these badges. I believe these are for veterans, American veterans inside the game. So the Nergal, not fast. Definitely not fast. Very slow. 30 kilometers an hour. This is with a turbo inside the, uh, the mobility slot and with a engineer skill as well. So please keep in mind this thing, it is horrible. And I can only imagine what people are going to feel if they don't set it up correctly with engineer on their driver and set it up with a turbo as well. I think the turbo is probably the number one piece of equipment on this tank. As I said with the, uh, the equipment analysis, I'll say the durability is probably number two. Number three, I definitely think that the rate of fire is necessary on this tank because you do quite often get yourself in these scenarios where you just have to pump out the damage or it's just not going to work. Whoa, good try against the top of the T-57, but it wasn't quite enough. I always feel a little bit nervous when I'm side scraping in a tank like this because remember that weak point on the side, it's very easy to hit. Uh, when you are side scraping out. And when you side scrape, it does seem so much more obvious to shoot here. Um, it just doesn't really seem obvious that you should shoot here because uh, that's the front part, right? You think, I'll shoot the front. It's like a 279E hull. On a 279E hull, you just shoot the, the flattest part at the front. You wouldn't shoot the, uh, the side. But that's exactly where you should be shooting with the Nurgle. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the style of this vehicle. I have to admit, it does look very flat. I understand that they've put the, the cool fire on the barrel. They put the cool fire on the hull, but it doesn't glow. It's almost as if it's like a, a 2D style, but I understand that this is the vehicle itself and it's not meant to be a 3D style on the tank. But when they've got a lot of cool looking tanks going in the game, I think that Wargaming would have maybe given this thing just a, a little bit of a glow or an ambience with regards to the style. I've been playing the, the Horees a lot recently on my free to play account and I know those things have now got really bad side armor. So while I couldn't pen him with an AP round from that angle, what I could do is for an HE shell. And I do 144 damage. That's not a small amount of damage. It's not quite half of what the shell would have done if I'd pen and managed, managed to penetrate an AP shell, but nobody wants to take 144 damage against a tank that they're not shooting at, right? 
And that is definitely one of the advantages of the HE shells of this tank. Man, imagine putting in like 500 alpha, albeit with only 57 millimeters of pen. It definitely does allow you to trade up in this tank. Talk about trading up. This doesn't feel like a trade up. That feels like a trade down, right? Even low roll as well, 322. But then again, they don't because they got 650 alpha, I believe, on that vehicle. So, oh well. RNG, it happens. But don't get mad, get even. And with a second shot entering the Hori one, now I'm feeling fairly good about myself. So this is just like the ideal kind of situation for this vehicle, where you can hide that lower plate. And again, with this tank, instead of side scraping, you kind of just drive around the corner from the front. It's by far the best way to play this tank. So please, 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 don't side scrape in this tank. Get used to how the tracks cover that lower plate. And you might as well just expose the hull like this, because if you side scrape, you're going to make that outer point so much weaker here. And if you just come around the corner like this and just pray your opponents don't engage you. With the shape of the hull, Obviously, uh, there's literally zero advantage with side scraping compared to just coming around like this. And as I highlighted, if you do come around the corner in the correct fashion, then you will be able to use those tracks to uh, cover your lower plate as well, which will be a great advantage. Whoa, Mr. Udet, you took that one. You didn't expect that going after that concept. Artillery is marking in that they're going to be able to shoot, but only in 25 seconds. And will we get another shot into the Udes? Oh, beautiful stuff there. 700 damage into the uh, Swedish top tier medium tank. So in this kind of a scenario, it's I, I, it, we're just an opportunistic tank, right? This concept's doing good work, and I've never used this position before. One of the reasons why I don't like this position is it's actually possible to uh, shoot through the walls here. So be very careful if you think this is a new hot position, because as soon as your opponents get here, you're going to have some immense regret as they just absolutely farm your side armor. But for this kind of a situation, for just trying to deal with whatever's in front of us, yeah, great. It's working out really well. The only other thing that I guess I could do in this situation is, considering my team have won the south, try to flank near where the STRV-1030 is. But if they got one of the TDs at the back, or even the artillery, it could be quite annoying. And good luck trying to drive out in front of the UDES. I think that UDES 16 might have something to say to me after we manage to just deal with them a couple of times. Although they haven't been spotted for a while. So, oh, hello UDES. Talk about having been spotted. Oh, it just hits my track. I'm going to use the durability to go progress straight towards him. Take a look behind me to see what's going to happen. And I'm happy to ram him. And you'll see that I'm just angling this vehicle kind of like at 45 degrees. I make a bit of a misplay here where I shoot his upper hull and it's angled. That was poor. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to just try and keep bumping into him, just try and keep the front towards us. Unfortunately, I took 700 damage from the Hori. We just take a moment to compose ourselves to make sure we finish off the Udes. With that second shot from the Hori, man, even with the durability device, these hit points do not go a long way. Good shot by the Hori there, right into the back of the turret. 1375 coming across. I probably should have intuition switched there. I think if I had intuition switched, I probably could have got him in a single shot. So a little bit of a misplay by me. But this is where this armor is just great. We're just wiggling backwards and forwards, making it awkward for him. And he has to actually stop to have a bit of a thing to shoot us that second time there. And yeah, doesn't manage to shut us down. Do we manage to hit the setter there? Well, the setter was last spotted on about 80% hit points, and now they're spotted on less than half, so it clearly we did. Now we're loading an HE shell, and boom, right through the upper hull. And suddenly, you can see how this vehicle can pile on the damage. It really can. And all that's left to do in this game is a bone to pick with the Hori 1, right? I, I didn't like what that Hori 1 did to me. Let's see if we can go after them. But what's this FE4202 thinking? So I've got a bit of an awkward situation here. I want to get the FE4202. Don't want to feed this Hori again. They've managed to get us twice. I don't want them to get us a third time. And I nearly just, nearly just fed them there. Luckily, the Char manages to shut down the Hori, and we're the only one spotting, so we get a nice, good chunk of assistance damage. And right into the back of the what? Okay, just NA server things. Can I blame my 100 ping? Maybe. But it's a good game. 4,500 combined, and this really just shows the all-round Nurgle presence. It's just got this armor that can dissuade equal and lower tier tanks. You've got to be a bit creative with how you play the vehicle with hiding its lower plate. And those HE shells, they can come up trumps against those lightly armored tanks. It's just an all-round brawly tank. I'd also like to highlight that this vehicle, this is about just the ultimate kind of position for it. You want to find a part of the map which is small, you've got cover from multiple angles, and you can just like drive around it and just shoot things. That's really what the, uh, the dream is for the Nurgle. Uh, and the last thing that you want is to have to push multiple flanks 
for many minutes of at a time when your vehicle is limited to 30 kilometers an hour. So I had a, a bunch of situations for the Nergal where we got to just play against uh, tier 6 and tier 7 tanks and tier 8 vehicles and you just drive in and the armor works out and your opponents don't manage to get you and you look cool. Alright, um, why don't I show you a situation for the vehicle where this tank really shouldn't work and how you can still hopefully try and use your knowledge of the terrain and the uh, the strengths of the vehicle, like its its height. It's quite a tall tank to be able to work in your favor. In this game, we're playing against a variety of tier 10 tanks, including a 60 TP and a 279E. Oh, ah, struggle. And um, there's not a single kind of low tier vehicle for us to really be able to make use of this armor. However, I do know a position that I, I love to use, especially in tall tanks like a Maus or a Panzer 7, German vehicles. Let's see if the Nergal can make this position work as well. So we can actually stick our gun right through here and, whoa, the start of the game. We put a regular round into a 279E. Now turn our attention towards a 60TP as well. Just trying to find that angle and ah, I shouldn't have probably found that final position until I was reloaded. A little bit of a misplay there by me. But yeah, the height of this vehicle can be a tremendous asset. Be that just shooting down on your opponents, either on their roof or on their front plate. Or alternatively, finding areas of the terrain where you can be able to only expose your turret or even just a tiny amount of your mantlet through those gaps. So you can see that the Moissian just doesn't really understand how this vehicle's armor layout works. And just like I did on the previous map, let me highlight once again, don't side scrape in this tank. Just come around the corner like this and then use that front track to be able to absorb the damage. And that's exactly where I think the Moissian got us. And this Moissian, he's just shooting my outside track. That's a bit of a silly sausage play. Maybe he thinks that that's part of my vehicle. No. Now, of course, players will learn uh, how the... <laughs> so weird. Players will learn how the Nurgle's armor layout works, but it doesn't really matter because as I showed you, you can get 300 millimeters of protection with that track protecting that lower plate. And that should be your goal. And from this perspective, this thing is just an absolute troll. I had another game on Erlenberg where I was playing against a, I think it was a Type 63, and I did this exact same thing against him, and there was just absolutely nothing they could do. Unfortunately, what you're seeing now is that even if you spam gold, it doesn't really matter against a Moissian. You, you can aim perfectly. You can hit the weak points. But if RNG says no, then RNG says no. Oh no, the Moistian finally got me. We'll have to take a look to see where he penned me. Did he manage to just catch my lower plate right on the outside? So yeah, good shot. Must have bypassed my track and actually found the lower plate there. Luckily, it looks like uh, the heat round from the 60 TP doesn't manage to find me. And we're going to still see if we can go after this Moistian, who once again tries to fire through my tracks, and it just gets absorbed by the track and doesn't manage to go into the hull on the either side. Even though it is kind of showing that there's two penetrations on this tank. Uh... I've only been penned once this game. That's interesting. Maybe it's because of the way that it goes through the track and it counts as penning the track, but then it doesn't go through the hull. I don't know. Just wargaming things, really. Talk about just wargaming things. We're firing full gold here, aiming for these weak points on these heavies. But it just doesn't really matter. Is this 60 TP really going to come after us here? I'm just hoping that I can manage to find the shot. Oh, beautiful. Right into the lower plate. That's as good as it gets. And you can see, like, the cogs in the enemy's brains kind of just turning as they're trying to figure out what they should do to the Nurgle. There's really no other tank that I can think of that uses its own tracks as, like, protection as it comes around the corner. You can kind of do it a little bit in a 50 TP. But really, I think in a 50 TP, it's more of when you just shoot the vehicle that you can't track it and also damage it at the same time easily from the side. That is the issue against the 50 TP. Whereas this thing, it's got those tracks as like extra protection, which does make the tank quite fun. But I will stress that it also makes the tank quite static. You have to find a corner. You have to be able to poke around. You have to keep your opponents in front of you. This is kind of like a, a one trick kind of aspect a one-dimensional kind of gameplay of the vehicle. Oh, nice, right into the back. Have a look at the 60 TP to make sure they're not following us up. But yeah, for, for, for a tank that does have a one trick, it's pretty fun within that regard. It's a tricky situation here. My team is down by three tanks and the enemy have got almost complete control of one side of the river. We bounce off the 279E there, unfortunately, and that's going to allow this M4Y to come around the corner. 
and put a great shot into the weak point of my tank. The Moistian's going to come round. Nice clutch shot to the top of that tank there. I guess one of the other equipment modules that somebody might want to use on this vehicle is the Vert Stabs. But honestly, its gun handling isn't that bad, and considering how slow it is, I feel like the gun handling is good enough. This thing isn't racing around, really. And unlike the Renegade, which has an awful weak point that's really easy to hit, so you want to do everything that you can to not sit still for very long, I think that it doesn't really matter so much if this vehicle does sit still. And I don't know which module you'd drop to be able to use a, a Vert Stab on this tank. Maybe the Gun Rammer, if that's what you want to do. I definitely wouldn't drop the turbo and I wouldn't drop the durability on this vehicle because the last thing that you want is to not keep mobile when you use the, uh, the bait of the tracks. And how beautiful is this right now, boys and girls? How beautiful is this? We're just absolutely farming this 2790. The moisture is going to come around the corner to come after us. And what I'm going to do now, we started with a regular round. We're going to finish with a regular round. Oh yeah, let's go. That's, that's starting off the battle and finishing the battle. We even get a thumbs up from the mouse there against a 279E. As OP as it gets at tier 10, and our tier 8 heavy tank is going for it. Now what I'm going to do is do a bait. I'm just going to leave my tracks here. I'm going to zoom out in third person. I know they're not going to hit that. And you basically force your opponents to take a chance. And more often than not, they will. They will just take that chance. And luckily for me, the IS-2152 gets baited. So we're going to be able to absorb that shell and then just get two free shots into him afterwards. And um, yeah, spoilers, unfortunately, the, the game ends. My team chases down the STRB-103B and who would have thought slow tank doesn't manage to actually get to farm at the end of the battle. So once again, let me highlight, uh, this vehicle does very well when it finds a position and it sits in it. I basically drove, uh, what, about 300, 400 meters into one alleyway and then after I was here, I like existed in like a hundred meter square of the map. That was my life. However, the Nurgle, it's very proficient for defending those kind of situations. And so if you're the kind of player who doesn't mind about not really being super progressive and you just want to get to an important location, you want to hold it, this thing can actually be pretty good. So this was an ace tanker for the Nurgle for 1,491 base experience. We finished top of our team in a tier 10 matchup. And even though we fired a variety of gold rounds because we made them count, we still make 45,000 credits profit without any boosters. So all in all, the Nurgle, what do I think about it? This tank is, it's not great, I, 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 but I don't think it's absolutely terrible. I think it's okay. It doesn't really add anything new to the game outside of those funky tracks, which a lot of people will think is kind of fun. What this vehicle reminds me of is a bit of a KV-5 mixed with a Renegade. It's like a, a Renegade and a KV-5 had a baby and here you go, it's the Nurgle. It's just a shame that this vehicle isn't as fast as either of those two tanks. It's going to be, it's not going to be great inside World of Tanks, that's for sure. But if you're a good player, there's no reason why you can't go into uh, a favorable position and be able to have some nice big rounds in this tank. I think this tank is quite consistent. You don't really have any kind of scenarios where you just miss and then you get absolutely rolled over instantly. I think it can defend itself fairly proficiently. Of course, there'll be some scenarios, I guess, against tier 10 tanks where an autoloader comes in and just decides that they're going to farm you. Not really too much you can do about that. I found with the tank that I didn't have any truly amazing, exceptional games in fast rounds. However, in those kind of scenarios, as I showed, where you just get to hold a position and the battle kind of gravitates towards you, as it usually naturally does, as your opponents have to destroy you before they progress to be able to go on to win, then this tank was, was pretty okay. And considering that you can be able to get this tank for 10 to 20 hours of gameplay in a fairly fun Halloween game mode. Yeah, I think it's a, a really good opportunity for a free to play player to be able to get a tank, to be able to make some credits or for somebody to just get something that then you could trade in for gold uh, in one of Wargaming's up upcoming trade-in deals, right? You could trade this thing and probably get an ELC for like a thousand gold or something if that's what you wanted to do. Not that I would recommend that because I don't want any more ELC, even 90s in the game. You're not going to do that to me, boys and girls. L the final, final word. This tank, it's easily worth like about 7,500 gold. Some people would push it to like 10,000 gold within that regard. And that for like 
10 hours of play where you get the tank, you also get a funky crew, and you also get a variety of other rewards, including six days of premium. I think if you're going to invest time in any of Wargaming's events, this is the one that you should probably do throughout the year. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was my look at the Nergal. I really hope you enjoyed it and you found this video useful and helps you to make a decision. If it was, you enjoyed it and it helps you, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below, A, what you think about the Nergal, B, what do you think about those tracks allowing you to parry people trying to ram you, and, and C, do you think that this thing actually takes less falling damage or, or do you think that maybe I just got lucky? And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.